Hey guys, it feels so great to have you on board for another week and another Green Turf experience. In this installment, we zoom in on Cameroon's evolving bid to host the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations with one question, is it a feasible venture? The hard-nosed German coach of Cameroon's indomitable Lions, Volker Finke, designates his own henchmen weeks after the Joseph Owona-led normalization committee at the Cameroon Football Federation appointed four World Cup spies for Cameroon. And then we probe the strengths and weaknesses of Cameroon's first round World Cup adversaries, Brazil and Croatia. Stay on with us as we now attempt to bring you up to speed on the latest trickles from the world of sports with a Cameroonian connotation. Hey Sergio, is that good enough? So let's bang it on! Emphatic reports have for the past couple of days been announcing the arrival in Yaoundé next May 4 of FIFA boss Joseph Sepp Blader. The global football superintendent is expected to answer present at a ceremony to formally inaugurate the Confederation of African Football Academy in Bankomo on the outskirts of the capital. While the official agenda of the ceremony is still due publication, there are emerging hints the event which will be chaired by the Cameroon CAF President Issa Hayatou could happen on May 5. And though Mr. Blita is expected to depart shortly after the ceremony, he is expected to be grilled by reporters at a news conference he will jointly grant alongside Hayatou. Leaders coming to Cameroon, if ever it happened, will coincide with burning and unanswered questions regarding the recent decision by the World Football Managing Body to extend the mandate of the normalization committee it imposed on the country last year following contentious elections at the Cameroon Football Federation which saw the re-election of incarcerated incumbent Ia Mohamed. The prolongation of the committee's stay at Tinga until November 2014 has hardly gone down well with critics who persistently decry the opacity that has characterized the work of the structure, which was charged with rewriting sections of the Federation statutes, as well as organizing fresh elections by now expired March 31, 2014 deadline. <laughs> These young ladies, Elundunga Manuela Peggy and her twin sister Elundunga Linda Claire, are only about 14 years old but are already burning tennis talents to keep the taps on for the coming years. A couple of months ago, they created a huge buzz when sports authorities in Togo only narrowly missed sweet talking their parents into having them dump their Cameroonian nationalities to become Togolese citizens thanks to their massive tennis endowments. In early April, they reaffirmed the reason to bank on them as rising stars in the discipline when they mounted the podium several times in Lome, still in Togo, where they participated in two tournaments regrouping 14 African countries and organized under the canopies of the International Tennis Federation and the Confederation of African Tennis. Alongside under 12 Wamba Paul Brunel, all of them from the Chang Tennis Club, 
brought home six medals from the Lume tournaments, while Manuela Peggy scooped two silver and a bronze medal. Linda Clare won two silver medals and little Paul Brunel backed home a bronze. The Lome competitions were part of five major tournaments organized by the International Tennis Federation and the Confederation of African Tennis with the goal of assessing and grading rising African tennis men and women with the best among them eventually winning scholarships for further talent refining in Morocco. Cameroon's one and only hosting of the biggest continental football party, the Africa Cup of Nations tourney, dates back 42 years to 1972. Yet the country, home to icons of the caliber of Albert Roger Miller, Thomas Nkono, Belle Joseph Antoine, the Theophile Abegas, and others, has won the competition four times and holds the record as the first African side to cruise into the quarterfinals of a World Cup contest back in 1990 in Italy and this year will count its seventh appearance at the tournament in Brazil. On the downside, however, and despite all that reputation, football management in the Central African nation over the years has been simply disastrous. Nonetheless, there are nascent indications the situation could be reversed before very long. Cameroon is looking to play host to the Africa Cup of Nations in 2019 after winning the bid to welcome the women's version of the competition in 2016. But the zillion dollar question is, has Cameroon got the necessary infrastructure to outsmart other bid rivals Algeria? the Ivory Coast, the DR Congo, Guinea and Zambia. Of course, since 2006, the government has embarked on an ambitious program for the development of sports infrastructure, a venture popularly known by its French acronym PENDIS, which has so far culminated in the erection of a more than 20,000 seater stadium in Limba in the southwest and a similar yet sluggish project in Bafusam in the West region. And with an inspection team from the Confederation of African Football CAF awaited in the country this May, Sports Minister Adum Garwa and Joseph Owona of the Normalization Committee at FICA Foot were filled last week to conduct a preliminary inspection of stadia shortlisted for use in convincing the CAF missionaries and boost the country's chances of winning the bid. Experts note that while Algeria stands a huge chance of winning the hosting rights, Cameroon's chances are slim considering that the likes of Zambia, the Ivory Coast and to an extent the DR Congo have convincing bid plans. And beyond stadia and training grounds in Douala, Yaoundé, Garwa, Limbe and Bafusam, Cameroon must also ensure Grade 1 hotels, optimal communications and transportation facilities to and from the host venues to boost its chances. <laughs> Kindly share your thoughts with us on these and any other concerns you may have by simply dropping us a line at Green Turf at Canal2International.net. Now, Road to Brazil is a regular feature on Green Turf every week. And with the tournament debut date fast approaching, we turn the floodlights on two of Cameroon's first round opponents, Croatia and Brazil. But before that, here is an indicator of embryonic antagonism between the Normalization Committee at the Cameroon Football Federation FICA Foot and Volker Finke, the coach of Cameroon's Indomitable Lions. Enjoy! Relations between the manager of the Indomitable Lions and the caretaker Normalization Committee at the Cameroon Football Federation are virgin 
on hopping from the fry pan into the fire before very long. Volker Finke has unilaterally opted to designate four foreign nationals to flank him at the Brazil 2014 World Cup. The four include Frenchman Christophe Manouvrier, a physical mentor who currently works with French league and site Olympique Marseille. In 2011, he was part of the indomitable house technical team at the LG Cup in Morocco and a year later was hired to physically prepare the elephants of the Ivory Coast at the 2012 Africa Cup of Nations, which was jointly hosted by Gabon and Equatorial Guinea. Finke picked Manouvrier alongside three of his German compatriots whose precise roles are yet to be rendered public. The designations reportedly awaiting approval by the Ministry of Sports and Physical Education follow recent outpours of mixed feelings after the Normalization Committee boss Professor Joseph Owona also took it upon himself to single-handedly appoint Jamanga Ungene. Etienne Sokeng, both of the National Football Technical Department, Bonaventure Jonkep of New Stars of Douala and only recently of the Junior Lions. Owona handed them the task of spying on Cameroon's World Cup group stage adversaries and then producing a garden report to be served Finke ahead of the Brazil expedition. However, reports indicate the Ministry of Sports refused to validate the appointments and is now ready to endorse Finke's list. Clearly, the counter-appointments are bound to trigger much-needed serenity in the den of the Lions, and especially at the technical bench, with plethoric numbers that include Finke himself, his three assistants Tanko, Pile, and Songo, and then the eight men being injected by Owona and the German tactician. The zillion dollar question is, does Cameroon need 12 men on its technical bench for the World Cup? Brazil were the first of 32 nations to qualify for the 2014 World Cup after they were handed the tournament hosting rights by FIFA on October 30, 2007. 2014 will be the first time they are welcoming the event since 1950. In fact, this year also marks the continuation of the Silly South attendance at every edition of the tournament since it was established. As the country's close to 200 million inhabitants breeze up for the biggest football party on earth amid reports of rising living costs, belated stadium construction and threats of protests, Brazilians are nonetheless folding sleeves not only to serve the world, their national dish, a stew of beans blended with beef and pork known as feioada, but also carnivals which have become a trademark of the South American giants. On the sidelines, fears of soaring crime waves and prostitution during the event are also claiming the headlines. But regardless of these concerns, 65-year-old coach Luis Felipe Scolari says he will give his compatriots something to write home about by keeping the 2014 World Cup, which will make a record sixth win for Brazil after 1958, 1962, 1970, 1994 and 2002. And of course armed with men including the likes of FC Barcelona's Neymar and Dani Alves, Scolari strongly believes he's got all what it takes to keep the cup.
Croatia beat football underdogs Iceland on an aggregate 2 0 score in the UEFA regional playoffs to secure a place at the 2014 World Cup. And as the tournament kickoff date progressively draws near, the 4.2 million football loving Croatians are panic stricken. Their defense setup, which appeared quite porous and unreliable during the qualifiers, remains a major source of weakness for the Europeans who cherish Seer, a national dish comprising small, milky white cheeses delivered fresh from the farms. Nonetheless, Croatia can boast off and count on past glories which include finishing third at the 1998 World Cup edition in France. They are coached by 42-year-old Niko Kovac, who reportedly lacks management experience and was recently promoted to the national selection from the under-21 side shortly after Croatia squeezed through to the qualifying playoffs late last year. You can however count on captain Darijo Snar who tallies over 400 appearances with Shakhtar Donetsk in Ukraine and 110 national team caps, as well as midfielder Luka Modric of Real Madrid, who can be a major source of headache for opponents of any caliber. A famous Brazilian soothsayer has predicted that Germany will win the 2014 World Cup. Marcia Fernandes foretold the forthcoming triumph of the Mannschaft last two months ago during the fourth edition of an annual mystical fair held in Sao Paulo. She told over 40,000 visitors that she was certain Germany would take home the trophy when the curtains are pulled on the 20th World Cup in July this year. Germany will play in what bookmakers presume the group of death alongside Portugal, Ghana and the United States of America. Marcia Hernandez's pronouncements recall memories of Paul the Octopus who literally stole the show during the 2010 World Cup in South Africa with match score divinations that mostly turned out correct. Hatched in 2008, Paul the Octopus died in October 2010 after earning fame as an oracle used to predict football match results by choosing one of two boxes containing food and bearing the flag of a national side. He predicted the elimination of Germany at the 2010 World Cup SEMA final and a win for Spain against the Netherlands in the final that was split on July 11 by eating from the box with the Spanish flag on it. Meanwhile, apart from Marcia Fernandez, other Brazilian astrologists, including Serena Salgado, have predicted that Brazil has got all it takes to win its sixth World Cup this year. Many lovers of the beautiful game, this rounded airfield leather is simply gorgeous to behold. It is the 2014 official World Cup ball and has been baptized the Brazooka. It succeeds the controversial Jabulani used in South Africa in 2010. The Brazooka was unveiled in Rio de Janeiro in late November by the German top sports gear manufacturer Adidas. It weighs exactly 437 grams and was named through an online baptism vote by a million Brazilian fans in preference to Bosa Nova and Carvanaleska. Brazuca signifies the Brazilian way of life and was tested for two and a half years by 600 footballers from 30 clubs scattered worldwide. 
Its red, blue and green stripes on a white background perfectly match Brazilian colors. But just like the Jabulani, the brazuca has attracted widespread criticism ever since its formal presentation. Fault finders argue it is too light for windy conditions and will cause nightmares for goalkeepers at the tournament. But FIFA has overlooked all such concerns, insisting the ball goes into use as from June 12, 2014, in the opening World Cup match between the host and Croatia at the Sao Paulo Stadium. Meanwhile, Brazilian parents of all kids born on December 2 when the ball was officially unveiled have been collecting a sample each for their newborn babies at Adidas outlets, but they must come armed with birth certificates to avoid fraud. The brazuca currently sells at 140 euro for 91,000 francs CFA apiece. So hopefully you do understand that your constant loyalty and sometimes contentious comments all add up to a huge spring of inspiration and motivation for us. So why don't you join me right now in acknowledging the immense efforts deployed every week by producer Calvin Tikam and stage manager Serge Tachemo as well as the entire production crew. And now going forward and moving on to something else, Turkish side Besiktas have declared their readiness to pay as much as 4.5 billion francs CFA to try and lure veteran Chelsea striker Samuel Eto to Istanbul. Don't you go away! A week ago, it was rumored that among contenders queuing up to hire the services of veteran striker Samuel Ito for the next season was Turkish side Besiktas. A report in the English Daily Mail last week moved the gossip from lips to reality when it announced that the Turkish outfit are ready to offer the Chelsea attacker 6.5 million pounds about 4.5 billion CFA francs per year if he accepts to leave West London and Stamford Bridge for Istanbul when the next FIFA transfer windows are flung open in July. Eto joined Chelsea from previously richly assembled Russian side Anzi Makaskala last year on a year-long deal for an undisclosed fee. Recently, there have been speculations indicating he is set to part ways again with coach Jose Mourinho, despite sticking out as one of the most productive attackers for Chelsea. As of last week, Eto'o counted 14 goals for 40 appearances in all competitions with the English Premier League Giants. According to the Daily Mail, a delegation of Besiktas officials flew into London last week to initiate negotiations with Ito. I can see the colors of the rainbow And I can feel the sun on my face in 1977, global football icon Pele predicted that before long and before the turn of the century, an African national selection will back home the World Cup. But the year 2000 has come and gone, and Pele's prophecy is still to come true. In fact, the only African nations that have come any close to reaching the World Cup deciding stage include the 1990 generation of Camus in Dominable Lounge, which thrilled the world at the Italia 90 edition by taking the continent to its first ever quarterfinals. They have since been emulated only twice by Senegal in 2002 and Ghana in 2010. Looking back in time, 
Opinion easily converges towards the conclusion that the Cameroon team that attained the feat was stuffed with a cluster of patriotic and selfless footballers led by the inspirational Albert Roger Miller who aged 38 at the time found the net four times to emerge as the tourney's oldest ever goal scorer before returning to the competition four years later in the United States at the age of 42 to hammer in another goal. His five World Cup goals have made him Africa's all-time leading scorer at the Global Football Fiesta, an achievement that contemporary stars like Didier Drogba, Samuel Ito, Asamoa Gyan, Peter Osazi Odem Wingi and others have failed to replicate. Drogba counts only two World Cup goals from two editions and Ito two from three participations. That's the sign of a victory. Je peux voir cette soif de victoire Le stade est fondé, supporter sur excité over the past three years, the Cameroon Rugby Federation has more or less been hemmed in a comatose state. In fact, matters even got worse last year when the body was simply expelled from the International Rugby Board, which oversees practice of the sport at the global level. And that was after its suspension from the Continental Confederation of African Rugby. And so since 2011, the country has missed out on a number of important competitions and was still currently owes the international board 144,000 US dollars. That's a towering 72 million franc CFA and money the federation can hardly find. But despite the leadership and management pitfalls and cacophony, that drove the federation to its knees in the first place. Newly elected officials say they are working to resurrect the structure and then the practice of the game across the country. Jean-Daniel Licale, the new federation president, has announced that he is working for the Confederation of African Rugby to remove the ban on the country before the end of the current year and is in talks with the Ministry of Sports in a bid to source funding to clear the outstanding debt to the Confederation. He says he has engaged a meticulous house cleaning targeting especially members of the old managerial team blamed for wrecking the Federation. And so with competitions gradually being organized nationwide, Rugby practitioners are anxiously rubbing their palms in high expectations. Thanks very much. You can see we're shooting this edition of Green Turf from some place called Glacierbio out here in Bonaparizo in Douala. Now remember, calling Sport of Garwa are into the group stages of the CAF Confederations Cup after beating Petro Atletico of Angola home in Angola on Sunday 1-0. Elsewhere, Cameroon have been drawn in Group D of the 2015 Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers. They'll play against the Ivory Coast and the DR Congo. That's where we put a full stop on this other edition of Green Turf. Of course, thanking you immensely for being out there. You are the reason for our existence. Shalom!